Dr. Burke Harris, welcome. Thank you, thank you. You work with kids who are repeatedly exposed to what you call toxic stress. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense of what the kids you work with in places like Bayview, Hunters Point, Viz Valley, and neighborhoods like that, what some kids who live in those places go through. What's it like, what's life like? Um, sure, what we see is um, many kids who are exposed to um, things like certainly a lot of community violence, but also um, kids who are growing up in families where there's a parent with mental illness or perhaps substance dependence and um, uh, some of the challenges that they see in terms of just dealing with some you know, household dysfunction. There's a lot of um, families where um, one parent isn't at home or uh, maybe a parent is incarcerated. And so these are the challenges that we see. And what's interesting and what you've discovered and what others have discovered and you're building on is the idea that this affects them not just psychologically, but physiologically. Talk about the physiological changes that happen. That's exactly right. When kids are exposed to chronic stress, and particularly if it's the traumatic stress like I just described, um, it activates the, the stress response system, what we call the fight or flight system. And that um, uh, releases hormones and chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol. And uh, what we now understand is that kids who we previously thought had you know, problems with attention like ADHD, Actually, uh, what we're seeing is the impacts of um, these stress hormones that are in their body. And is it a change on their, their brains, their nervous systems, all, all of that? So it's actually all of those things. And um, younger children are more susceptible because their brains are growing, uh, are more immature and they're growing quite quickly. Um, but we see changes in uh, brain structure and function, what we call brain architecture, as well as changes to the hormonal systems in the body, and believe it or not, changes to the immune system as well. So they're at higher risk for diseases like asthma and um, of having worse asthma, and also for higher risk for diseases in adulthood like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and heart disease, which is the number one killer in the United States. So what you're saying is that an exposure to these kinds of stresses at a younger age can take years off a person's life when they grow up as well. Absolutely, there have been some major research studies that have shown that folks who are exposed to adversity in childhood have increased risk of chronic disease in adulthood. And in fact, those um, in the major study that was done between Kaiser and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, those people who were exposed to six or more of these adverse childhood experiences had a 20 year difference in life expectancy. Wow. What you're describing sounds a little bit like post-traumatic stress disorder, which we hear about in say veterans coming mm -hmm. back from Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Two questions, is that what we're talking about in these young people? Mm -hmm. And is it as hard to reverse in kids and teens and young adults as it is in veterans? Um, I would say it's a little bit, uh, what we're talking about is different from post-traumatic stress disorder. And one of the reasons why is because when a child is exposed to a traumatic experience, their brains and bodies are still developing. And so that trauma actually has a developmental impact because it affects the way that the brain will go on to develop. So it's not just a, a static um, problem, if that makes any sense. And so the good thing about that, and this is the promise and the hope, is that um, when we intervene early with kids, we have all of that brain development on our side in terms of the ability to uh, do healing work. So what do you do then when a, an infant or a young person, a, a, a two-year-old, three-year-old comes into yes. the clinic, what do you do knowing all of that? What do you do? Well, there are a couple of um, basic things that we do. Number one, we have a home visiting program. So it starts with really going in and um, looking at the child's environment, finding ways to support the parent. This is two generation work. When it comes to healing the effects of toxic stress, you have to work with the caregiver to be able to support them, as well as working with the child to heal the, the symptoms of toxic stress that they're experiencing. So you can't take away community violence. You can't uh, you know, necessarily cure a person's uh, substance abuse. You can't get somebody out of prison, some of the yeah. problems you described. So, so what can you do then? So one of the things that we can do is number one, 
teach the parent or caregiver. Oftentimes, many caregivers have their own history of trauma that's being repeated. Particularly, we see this in you know domestic violence or um, uh, having a parent with mental illness. And so, helping the caregiver. Um, have resources and tools to be able to support their child. That's one thing that's really important. A second thing that we do is certainly mental health care, both for the child and for the caregiver. And then the other things that we do are some wellness activities um, that are evidence-based, things like biofeedback and breathing techniques that help people, even if they're in that difficult situation to be able to self-regulate and calm down. And then last question, what's the most important thing you'd like people to take away from hearing this? They might, you know, people might say, well, I don't live in that neighborhood or my family doesn't go through this. Why should we care? Well, you know, one of the most interesting things about the big uh, study done by Kaiser and the Centers for Disease Control was that that study population was 70% Caucasian, 70% college educated. And what they found was that uh, two thirds of the population had at least one adverse childhood experience and um, 12% of their patients had four or more. So this is something that affects us all. This isn't, certainly we see a higher dose in low income communities, but for every California, for every American, this is an issue. All right, Dr. Nadine Burke-Harris, thanks so much for your work and for coming in and telling us about it. Thank you.